Hey, what's up guys? I'm Woke. I'm an artist from Connecticut and in today's video I'm going to be spray painting some of my original characters for Kids Lane Daycare. So let's get right into it. Here is the space that I will be painting. So we are going to do something nice on this and something nice on this. I thought it would be best to use the projector for this project. This way I could position the characters exactly where I wanted and also save time. My goal was to project this at night and then the next day try to complete the project. That way the daycare would have a complete day to air out before opening again after the weekend. Okay, we're back here next morning. Time to start doing some background. I think I might just do all the background and then start on this little panda guy. So let's get to it. So before I got started on the rest of this background, I wanted to do a quick practice area. So right here you can see I did this little blended area, added the grass, the clouds, and I'm gonna go over that with you now so I can show you guys exactly how it was done. I just wanna try this before I went and did it over here and over here. So let's get to it. So the first thing I decided to do was make a horizon line and just start blending a lighter blue tone up from the horizon line. From there I used the same blue tone to start mapping in some cloud shapes. Once all the clouds are mapped in, I can start layering some of the lighter tones on top of everything that's already based. Once the lighter tones are put in, I can then start the groundwork. It's important to let the top area dry because it's on drywall, so if you keep layering, you will create drips. Once the ground is all mapped in, I can take a lighter green and start fading down from the bottom. I then grab a lighter tone of green and also start fading down to the bottom. Here you can see me going in to add some more highlights to the clouds just to create more shape to them and uh, give them just a little more, uh, a little more of that real touch. All right, the background is done, which means I can start on this character finally. So helpful tip, I'm gonna start from the top. I'm gonna work on his hat. And once I get the hat done, I can continue down and I'm doing it that way just because if there's any drips or anything that happened while I'm working at the top, I can cover it as I work my way down. So let's get going on that. Little backstory on this character. I just sketched him up uh, earlier in the week. Just something random that I threw in the sketchbook that you can see here on the screen. Uh, then I plugged it into my iPad in Procreate to make a fine line drawing so that I was able to project it on the wall. And as always, I got to sign my piece, so I wanted to kind of make it a little subtle, just kind of make it look like it was part of the actual character. So I decided why not put it on the hat. Again, a helpful thing to remember is that there are lots of layers, but you want to make sure that everything is drying in time. It's drywall, which makes it a very smooth surface. The more you layer, the more, uh, if it's still wet, you have a risk of drips. Take a quick break take you down memory lane during the COVID shutdown. This was one of the jobs that I took on since I couldn't tattoo. And it actually kind of got me into graffiti again. I had taken a long break and uh, yeah, I'm gonna show you guys now. So this is one of the walls I did during the uh, shutdown. So this little fox here with the bottle and we got the deer with the pacifier. So. Thanks Kids Lane for keeping me busy during the uh, shutdown when I couldn't tattoo. Hope you guys like it. Let's get into the eyes. I've had a lot of requests for how I do these <laughs> new school eyes that I do. Uh, basically just, you know, putting a color down as the background and then um, kind of just creating like a darker tone where the lid would have a shadow and then layering some of the greens in there for the pupil putting the black dot and then making sure there's that nice little white shine to uh, make it all cute. 
One of the more difficult things about doing a uh, character, I guess you could say, with all white or all black, you know, not, not much area for color, is to just add like a lot of the gray tones to make sure there's some dimension to it. And make sure that it's getting a little more 3D. And um, also utilizing the clothing to bring out more, more color to it. So the red hat, eventually I'm going to add a purple shirt. There it is, purple shirt. It's like I knew the future was coming. And um, I also replay that purple in the raccoon that's on the other wall so that these characters have like a good back and forth play of color across from one another. Here's another good example, adding brown to the bottom of the foot instead of just doing uh, different tones of gray. I figured I'd add brown just to add a little more color to it. And then the popsicle. Gotta have a nice orange popsicle. Here's another mural that I did for Kids Lane Daycare. This one was done, I think, about a year ago. A little Candyland theme. Okay, time for the raccoon. Um, just like the last character, it's best for me to start from the top and work my way down, just in case of any splatter or anything, I can always cover it. And hey, there goes my dad. My dad actually was uh, working on the daycare as well, doing some of the drywall, fixing it up. So you get two Kevins. As far as the backstory on this character goes, uh, this was also drawn earlier in the week. I did not draw it in the sketch pad, but uh, luckily you get to see the entire drawing. I did this in Procreate on the iPad Pro. And as always, I just started with some loose shapes to try to figure out exactly the you know, the best position for the character, kind of tell a story, have it holding the sign. I thought it would all work together well. And on this character, the eyes are a little bigger, so you can kind of see the way that I'm shading the green a little more. I should probably mention the caps I'm using. I know I always mention them in all my other videos, but as always, uh, I'm using the stock cap that comes on the Montana can for the majority of the background and the large sections. And then the um, level one cap, the green cap from Montana for a little more of the finer details. And later on when I do the sign, you'll see me use the uh, stencil cap, the tiny pink stencil cap, which can be found online. Here I'm adding the white highlights on the eyes to give it that nice shine. This is definitely one of my favorite parts of uh, doing my characters just because it's that nice final touch that always just makes that kind of roundness and shine to the eyes. Also not sure if you guys have noticed but there is a deadbolt and a door handle that's in the way and luckily I noticed I was able to move the door handle. It didn't open because the deadbolt was locked, but it was nice to be able to move the handle around to get all those details in the mouth. I have no idea what I would have done otherwise. I just taped off and tried to move it as best I could, and I'm really happy with the final outcome. This door was definitely very smooth and a uh, very s slick surface to work on so I had to be careful when I was layering the paint on this area to make sure that there weren't drips. But yeah, lots of layers to get that final end result. And as always, I'm going to take a quick break to say if you guys want to support me more, you can always go on over to my website, kboart.com. I have plenty of merchandise there. I have stickers, pins, prints, t-shirts, uh, original artwork. Yeah, check it out, buy something. <laughs> and now we're at the very last part, the sign. So I'm just basing it with this brown and then in a second you'll see me go in and do the lettering. And I will also show you how I use the tiny pink stencil cap.
So for this portion, I'm using the level one cap that I was talking about earlier, the green cap from Montana, just to map in the letters. And then you'll see in a second here, I'm going in, this is the tiny pink stencil cap that I use to create the wood grain details. And I'm also going to use it to do the highlights on the edge of the letters so that they look like they're kind of engraved into the sign or cut out. All right, guys, I am all wrapped up and I am just about to show you. Just want to take a quick sec as always to say thank you for watching. And if you did like the video, be sure to like, subscribe and share it with someone. Also in the comments, let me know if you guys like the raccoon or the panda better. All right, I'll catch you guys on the next one. Here's the final product.